thank you so much for being here with us today at the IGY Rodney Bay Marina. It's a big event. It's ARC 2020, the 31st staging right here in St. Lucia. We have over 80 boats and we have over 400 participants, including kids. Every year, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, um, Event St. Lucia and World Cruising Club puts on this cooking demo. They gave all the vessels a basket filled with produce with local condiments. And not only that, this year we have a gold sponsor, which is Baron Food. So you're here with us today, and what are you cooking for us today, Eddie? All right, so today we're preparing some gourmet vegan cuisine. We're gonna have a sweet potato pie topped off with our bechamel sauce, a lovely hint of nutmeg, and you know Baron, you know, we, they offer nutmeg, and it's still one of our key spices here in the dish, and of course in our dish today. So this will also be served with a cheesy scallop dashin, which is also gonna be topped with some roasted eggplant and minced chive, and that's gonna bring out a little bit more of the smoky elements to pair with our own signature cashew and chickpea mozzarella. So this is gonna be a lovely scene and it's all vegan. You said vegan gourmet. Who think vegan and gourmet will be put together today losing local produce? Well, How are we gonna start this off? That's the thing, we're gonna use simple ingredients here. Like, we're gonna begin with our sweet potato and this is how we handle a sweet potato today of course we have two options we can use a carrot peeler or we can just go straight at it and utilize our chef knife and go ahead and begin the process and we're gonna continue making sure that we peel them thoroughly that we take off all of the excess skin the outer skin and that afterwards when we're ready to cut we have a perfectly clean sweet potato all right guys let me take you to the stove where we have two hot pots they're already filled with water mm -hmm. and to right. blanch our vegetables so we are already done with the sweet potato right now all we really the want peeling of it and yes. the soaking for all we're gonna do is get it into the cut that we desire so i'm gonna take a whole sweet potato and i'm up. gonna make it in i'm gonna cut it into a size that's easier to mm -hmm. manage and then we're gonna simply go ahead into thin slices which are gonna be put into boiling water and we're gonna allow it to sit anywhere from one minute to a minute and a half gotcha. and we're gonna continue on by placing it into our mixing bowls, getting our sauces on there, and then into our skillet. Eddie, what made you come up with this idea to use sweet potato and some of our local condiments um, and turn it into a gourmet uh, cuisine? What made you come up with that idea? Well, the beauty of gourmet cuisine is that it's really always simple. You always stick to the simple ingredients right. and that what you're really trying to do is to highlight the positives, the features of this ingredient that makes it so delicious, makes it so applicable to your recipe as well. Right. So I've definitely looked at what we have and I think sweet potato ought to be paired with a bechamel sauce. That's how a I feel. Bechamel sauce. With a bechamel what do you sauce. Use for the sauce. Bechamel sauce. So a bechamel sauce typically is like a roux. We prepare with oil, with fat, typically butter, and here I'm using vegan butter. Mm -hmm. And also you're gonna highlight the spice nutmeg in nutmeg. your bechamel today. So a bechamel is going to contain nutmeg, whether it's here or in Europe, but the beauty is that here in the Caribbean, we get to use Baron Foods nutmeg, right. which is really beautiful, and it brings out some of our unique flavors. It's fresh, and also in this dish, it's going to accentuate the sweet flavors of the sweet potato. So even if it's mildly sweet mm -hmm. or a little sweet, you're gonna definitely appreciate that that nutmeg, the cinnamon, and the coriander are mm -hmm. gonna be paired with this vegetable. All right, guys, so now we're gonna let our sweet potato go into the pot while we prepare our dashin. And the dashin prep is really the same as the sweet potato. So all we need is for these to cook away, not too soft, because blanching is really a delicate process where you only shock your vegetables and you don't allow them to overcook. That way, in your second stage of cooking, that you can highlight even the texture of the vegetable. With the dashin, the only addition I'm gonna make is that I'm gonna put on some gloves here. And this is gonna allow for the itchiness, the aspect that people are usually afraid of the dashin mm -hmm. to just pass you right by. Okay. <laughs> so you simply want to get yourself a pair of disposable gloves and you go at the dashin again in a similar fashion. Eddie, for our participants who will be getting the goodie baskets mm -hmm. filled with local produce, what could you tell them about our dashin? Alright, so dashin is referred to as taro mm -hmm. in, in its global language and pretty much this is one of your slow burning starches or your slow burning carbohydrates it's definitely a food that's gonna give you high energy throughout your use of it and you would definitely appreciate that it's a thickener so if you decide to go another route and grate it 
into your stews or soups, you still are gonna be getting majority of that sticky dashin texture, which I think it's most appreciated for. Also, the dashin here in the Caribbean, I find, cooks completely different. We definitely get a lot more texture. So when you get your gift basket, you would be getting some of the most premium dashin that I would think would be around. So definitely, you would get the experience of a sweet, firmly textured dashin. Which and is the crust for the dashin is the same. It's the so same. It's peel, slow, peel. thinly sliced, black, same mm -hmm. prep? Same prep. Okay, gotcha. We definitely go into it. And after we do this, what are we doing next? We're gonna this? mix them in, into mm -hmm. our, in our mixing bowl with our signature sauces, mm -hmm. and we're gonna allow them to sit into the skillet. For this pie, the cheesy scallop dashing, I'm gonna prepare another layer to it, which okay. is roasted eggplant. It's just mm -hmm. gonna be an accent, it's not very long, but it's going to change the flavor. It's gonna take the direction somewhere completely different. Okay. All right. And dashin, how long does it take to cook? We're gonna give it generally about the same, but I think we can do two to three minutes, which is mm -hmm. a bit more, really based on the density of the vegetable. And we're gonna go straight to our potatoes. We're gonna check on them and they should be just about done. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they're getting a little translucent around the edges. Right. And guys, I'm using a spider because this is so easy to get your vegetables up and out without all of the water being kept in it. So you mm -hmm. give it a few seconds to drain and there we go. No harm but Eddie, done. whilst you're blanching the sweet potatoes and the dashin, mm -hmm. what next steps do you do to get this done? So do you go into doing sauces or just focus on the sweet potatoes and dashin? So once the sweet potatoes are cooked like this, hey, you could try it as well. You're simply going to mix it into your sauce and that will allow it to absorb all the mm. flavor. And definitely it's not fully cooked, but it's going to get finished on there in the skillet. Right, um, right here, we're going to bring in our sauces, which we're going to appreciate here that we're using a bechamel sauce, mm -hmm. which is accented with nutmeg. And it's typically going to go very well with your sweet dishes. So if you can- And the bechamel sauce again for our participants, what ingredients are in it? So a bechamel sauce is going to be made using typically our butter, mm -hmm. oil, flour, right. and in our case, we're using vegan butter, of course. Mm -hmm. The key spice is gonna be nutmeg. And of gotcha. course, in there, we also have our dry ingredients like our barren, paprika, onion powder, which are gonna really help to turn up the flavor. Yeah. And this is all part of seasoning your food to taste, where you wanna get your hands on as many goodies, as many beautiful ingredients as possible, which are gonna let your dish go to the next level. So if you can smell this in its prep, it's already gonna be hinting a heavy nutmeg flavor. And we're simply gonna give it a toss here in the mixing bowl. We're gonna cover it again because we want it well done. Oh, that's what goes already. So we're just gonna save a little bit for our topping. So we peeled, blanched, put mm -hmm. into a bowl, added the sauce. Now you add a little bit of oil into the skillet. Yes. What's next? What's next, we're basically going to be adding in our final mix. So mm -hmm. this has already been coated in the sauce. As you can see, a good sauce is going to seal your vegetables. It'll almost shine right away. So that way you know that it's fully coated and we're going to let it sit in, form it into the, into the, into the skillet and we're going to get right on the way. Sizzling over a hot coal pot. All right, so we're going to set our skillet packed with our sweet potato mm -hmm. in a bechamel sauce and we're gonna simply lay it on here. In fact, guys, when you're using a cold pot at any point, let's use our mittens. Mm -hmm. We're gonna secure you. Okay, this great. This is simply gonna sear away and it's gonna bake, but since we want to maintain some of the moisture, we're gonna cover it for the first 15 minutes and then we're gonna take it off. So Eddie, we're done with the sweet potato in bechamel sauce. We're now moving on to the dashin. Yes, indeed. Obviously, sweet potato has a sweet note to it. Dashin doesn't have it. Do you add any ingredients to give you that sweetness with the dashin or you leave it this way and just have it this way? So in this dish, you're actually gonna appreciate the mild sweetness of dashin because dashin does have a sweet it note does. to it. But I wasn't it's aware. very mild. So okay. that way we're gonna be utilizing it for a different process, which is for the baking of our cheesy mm -hmm. mozzarellas. Pretty much those are gonna add to a different accent, a different note, which is higher on an acidic garlicky note. And then we're gonna simply pair it here for an umami and extra roasted, extra roasted flavor, we're gonna simply right. pair it with roasted eggplant. All right, so here we and cut- And the prep for it is the same. It's literally as, the same. Right. We're pretty much okay. gonna cut it into something that's a little bit about half an inch, and it's gonna allow for a quick blanch, but it's still gonna maintain its texture right. after we've cooked it. Hey guys, we're gonna actually be 
putting this into the pot now. We're gonna leave it and for blanch anywhere. It. Blanching Same it process. from anywhere from two to three minutes, which is gonna allow for a proper cook. And in there, we've already added three teaspoons of sea salt, barren sea salt, mm -hmm. which is gonna allow for the penetration of the water and of the heat into the vegetable. So this okay. is gonna provide an easy blanch and the way will be on cooking in a moment. And guys, we're gonna move on to preparing the second element. And I think we can begin initially with our eggplant. And this egg is gonna plant, be a very right. small note of the dish, but believe me, there will be some impact. I'm gonna roast two of these. These are pretty much your sweet peppers. And they're gonna allow just for a bit more umami and a little more color in this dish. So you roast with peppers yes, in a got, skillet? We're actually gonna roast these on an open fire. Oh. That's the beauty of this dish, actually. Everything is gonna be done on an open fire for, okay, the, for the roasting that is. So we have it on a high heat mm -hmm. and we're simply gonna let our eggplants and our peppers sit onto the fire, onto the open fire. How long does this stay? Um, basically, you will be observing your vegetables and giving it time. As soon as it browns and it, it starts to crisp, then you're full, fully aware that it's well cooked. Okay, um, it'll great. take anywhere from three to four minutes to get it to fully crispen up, ripen up. And then in the skillet, maybe another two minutes for the flavors to mesh together. To mesh together, I got you. So Eddie, we've put the vegetables in a bowl with water with some lime. Mm -hmm. We move on to the next stage. Yes. Yeah, so the roasting we, process is almost done, correct? It's complete. So here we're actually going to start slicing up our seasoning peppers. And guys, as you know, these are really a bit tricky. You know that some of them may be sweet, some may be mm -hmm. a bit more spicy. So please just give yourself a little taste. Just to ensure. Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> oh, just to God. ensure that you're getting the right flavors in there. All right, and we're going to proceed to cut our local shives. I realize you use a lot of lime. Give us a little bit more info about why do we use the lime and how often should we use the lime? Well, it's, it's really the acidity that you're using the lime for. So I would pretty much give more light to acidity because it can change. You can probably use a touch of vinegar if you don't have a lime. Okay. And Barron's vinegar is always there for you. Mm -hmm. And of course, the lime is a very good antiseptic vegetable, so therefore, or fruit rather. So therefore, we're gonna utilize it here so that we can help to clean, remove the dirt particles that may be on our vegetables, as well as prevent the oxidation so that we can keep the aesthetic element of each of our ingredients. Mm -hmm. yeah, and after and we're done chopping the vegetables, we then... We proceed to lightly saute it. In the, in the meantime, we're gonna begin mixing in our dashin as well, because what we're preparing here is simply going to be our topping. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be our final element, almost, almost as garnish, but it's gonna present itself as an entirely different dish. So the eggplant is gonna be the main medium. We have the sweet peppers which are roasted that are gonna add another tone to the dish. But with the mozzarellas, the dish would have already taken on a certain amount of personality. And in the roasting process, we turn the vegetables over every how many minutes? So we, we don't particularly time this because it may differ in terms mm -hmm. of the heat that you're using. But right. once you've seen a, br a nice crisp layer around your vegetable, you know it's for okay. certain that it's good. All right, so okay. here we've already turned this off. You may give it a few dust to get some of that black element out, but you really are going to be appreciating the skin of your eggplant. And it's really simple. Just on any stovetop, you're going to change the flavor. You're going to pretty much be unlocking a proper seared flavor. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're using barren paprika and you definitely want to create a little more of your smoky element, you don't have to worry. You just grab a sweet pepper or two and you roast it. And that's it for you. In okay. your dish, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create the perfect balance. And all of these elements are fine, simply because this is a topping. <laughs> okay. So in the main element of the dish, everything is fine, everything is minced. And for the topping here, we're going to appreciate all of these textures. Immediately, we can also put on our pot mm. and get our skillet going. Which is also going to be used to put our dashin in. So what's next, Eddie, now that we've chopped the vegetables and we've roasted the... The eggplants, eggplants and vegetables, and perfect. Peppers. So we're gonna add these into the hot skillet. Mm -hmm. We've already brushed it with olive oil and here it's sizzling, it's smoking up, it's hot. We're simply gonna saute these in here on the best part here. Most people don't know this, but coconut milk, if you're using a hot skillet, it's gonna turn to oil. It's gonna sizzle up and it's gonna give you a light coconut oil. So this okay. is also beautiful because it lets you see a sauce and get it up really quickly. Okay. And this is this right here, this boy right here, when we break it along the sides, 
we open it up and we get out the, the white flesh on the inside. This plus water and a good blender is coconut milk right away. We're gonna add a little bit of barren sea salt here. Mm. And pretty much this will allow for the flavors to be infused even more. So this paired with our cheesy dish is gonna add a different balance to it completely. And I think that this is really one of the more remarkable parts of this pie. As you can see guys, the color is absolutely amazing. You don't need it much. It smells amazing too. Thank you. But it's gonna have great impact. All right guys, we're gonna be moving to our dashin. We're gonna take this off the pot and simply rest it aside. Okay. We're gonna try our best to get as much of it out because afterwards, we're simply gonna be lining the pot for its final use. Make sure that it's properly dressed and we're gonna go right at the dashin. The dashin is gonna be covered in our signature chickpea mozzarella and cashew mozzarella, both of which we're gonna use simple ingredients like our barren paprika, barren sea salt, barren onion powder. Of course, we're gonna be using things like coconut milk, things like, well, of course, our acidity, lime, white wine vinegar, and of course, it's gonna bring together an entirely different mix. This, of course, has been pre prepped Mix it all up together, right? Eddie? Indeed. All right, guys, so to prepare this sauce, we simply created a very thick roux with our turmeric, Barnes turmeric as well included, nutritional yeast, and all of our Caribbean flavors, seasoning peppers, shives. And then we've built it up from there. We've brought it together with a bit of cassava flour or tapioca flour, which is gonna add a little bit more texture to this dish. And it, what it, do we do next? We're gonna add in our cashew mozzarella, which is our second sauce. Mm -hmm. And this one is made from our local natural cashews and mm -hmm. we simply soak them or blanch them in hot water. Right. We allow the onion powder and the garlic powder to take the main face and of course that's barren there again. And we of course are going to be incorporating a little bit more of this cassava flour. Of course keeping it quite local, you know, bringing those ingredients together. With barren ingredients. With barren ingredients indeed. So right here we've already given this a thorough mix. Look at our pot. All the, all the vibes are still in here, you know. Our eggplant elements and this is going to make for the perfect it just stage is going to allow everything to come together and since this is scallop we would expect of course for us to have a lot of these elements floating around here in the sauce of course they're going to be seared away and simply allowed to cook on the open fire but coming together as a lovely scallop dish and we're going to layer on our roasted eggplant topping oh, it looks so good. i'm going to let it sit there for a moment so you can appreciate the color <laughs> yeah. What next do we do? So we're just simply going to spread on our topping, which is the roasted eggplant, mm -hmm. chives, seasoning peppers, and that's just going to turn it up another level. This can be a simple dish, guys, but trust me, our local ingredients and barren foods products make almost everything gourmet, everything mm -hmm. incredible. So right. right here, we're just spreading it up nice and even, and we're going to let it right away on the heat. And to oh. lock in all that moisture and Yes, everything. indeed. All and that goodness, we're right? We're gonna go right away to our sweet potato pie. Should be done its first stage and let's have a look at it. Oh. All right, guys, so we're back around here to our sweet potato pie. Let's have a look. I'm really excited to do this. Oh my gosh, it smells coming out of that. I can see it sizzling out there. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna let this go. How we're gonna let... It's gonna do about another 20 minutes before those crispen. And then about, we can serve Sweet. it. It's gonna remain as a mm -hmm. right? That way you know that it's caramelized, all the flavor has begun to lock and it's kicked up. Therefore, it's gonna have an even more texture. It won't simply be soft and smooth, right, right. but then you'll have the crispness of the edges. All right, guys, we're back to the finished pies and this is what they should look like. We have a lovely crust here and this one still has a lovely simmer and we're about to do our tasting. All right, guys, so we're ready to eat. And Kina's gonna do our taste test. Thank today. you, Eddie. That looks great. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to dig it. I think I'm gonna turn vegan after this. Ah, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. mm. Eddie, oh my god. All right, guys, so this is our sweet potato pie in our bechamel sauce. Scalloped, and it's lovely and it's local. All right, guys, this is our cheesy scallop dashin. Thanks, Eddie. I'm Edison Lane. I'm 20 years old. 
and I'm very appreciative for being here. Of course, you know, I'd like to thank the ARP and all of the sponsors who've got us here. And if while you're on island, you'd like something, we deliver and we deliver right to you to the north. And if you're local, we cater to you as well. And this is definitely what we have here, gourmet, high quality vegan cuisine. And we're there, we're here for you. And thank you so much for having us again.